Hello everybody, how's it going? My name is Avery, and in this video we're going to be finishing up the tile mapping. So let's just jump right into the code. So let's make it so we can load in a file, and let's make it so we can use several different textures. For our map file, um, just open this up, and I'll save it as, let's go into here, and I'll save it as 1.map. Now the name of the file doesn't matter at all, but uh, I guess we're going to say the extension type is map, and it can just be map number one. So in here we're going to have the width. So we do five, and then the height will be five, and then we can do the actual grid. So we can, this will right here will basically be the same thing as the last map. So this is a five by five grid. Um, we can set that one to three, that one to two, four, and eight, just to have a plan around. So now we're going to go and load in this file. We're going to set the width and height based on this and we're going to load this into our one dimensional array and if you're using bigger numbers say like 11 and you know it looks a little off what you could do is put zeros in front of everything else and then they'll look even and i'll show an example of that soon so now in our load file now that we have this our load map now that we have this let's pass in one dot map just like that and in here we'll take a file name or we can just call it a map file and it's a string oh that's the wrong spot right here map file string so for this part we're gonna have to actually import some libraries but we'll do that right after I guess um, so we're gonna do file and then error and then we'll do iu util dot read file and then map file just like that so this isn't opening and closing it i mean it is but you don't have to call open and close separately this is just going to read in the file just like so and then we can check for the error so if error equals if it's not empty then we can just say format print line error and OS exit one so that just means that the file didn't load or didn't exist or something like that so now in here we have new lines uh, we want to break it up by spaces and break it up by new lines so new line just looks like that except you can't see it so we'll call it remove new lines and this is going to be equal to strings replace string file and then I'll break it up by the new lines and then we'll replace it with spaces because we're gonna break it up by the spaces next and that's gonna be negative one right there and then sliced is just gonna be the name of our object strings split remove new lines okay and now it's splitting it by the spaces so now we want to figure out the first two inputs that's the width and the height so let's set map width to negative one and map height to negative one and we'll just loop through our splice basically um, I'm calling it our sliced I mean um, we'll just move th through that so it's going to be I is greater less than the length length of sliced and then i plus plus so now that we're in here we can read in everything and we can comment this out we don't need this anymore that was just for testing and now we can check for some stuff uh so we're gonna want to get integers and we're gonna want to get strings because right now everything is integers, but I've also mentioned that we're going to have the file names for what type of file they are. So to get an integer, we're going to do s equals, then that one right there, and then string conversion, parse, int, sliced i, um, base 10, and 64 bytes. And then it'll just be like this. So that's the integer that we're using. So if map width 
equals negative one, then map width equals m. Else, if map height equals negative one, then map height equals m. And then everything else should be done in here. So we can just do tile map equals append tile map m, just like that. So that should push the rest into there. And I think that maybe we need to cut off something because we need to make sure that there's no empty line at the end. We can do that by, let's just do if the length of tile map is greater than map width times map height, then tile map equals tile map length tile map minus one minus one so that's just getting rid of something at the end that I've noticed sometimes sticks are on there so let's just try running it okay 156 unexpected in it let's see not right there it's supposed to be close okay now let's load in all these things up here and that should be with that, and that should be like that. Okay, and now up here at the very top, in our import, we can do import like this. And let's go and cut this out and paste it into here. And now we can import the rest of the libraries that we're using format, IO, IO util, OS strings and string convert and let's check okay so let's look at this append that should be two p's and that should be parse int like that alrighty so looking at it it looks like it worked we have our five by five grid and we have it all drawn out this is the eighth tile, that's the fourth tile, and that's the eleventh tile. As you can see, some of these tiles have nothing below them, so it's just showing this water. So whenever you create your map, you kind of just want to pick them out strategically to make sure that they look well together. Now that we've done that, let's make it so we can actually check what file it's in. So we can say we have a grid and we'll have different letters for different files so we can do grass and so this is just going to be a duplication of the original one and it's just going to be like that so this is what ID it is and this is what file it comes from so to know that we're going to check in here for the next part and I guess look through them basically and figure out if it should be this integer or if it's going to be a string that's pushed in and to do that we can just check right here so if if I if less than the map width times the math height plus two because there's the math width and height that are also in there then else right here then else we'll do source map equals append source map and then we're going to pass in sliced i because m is just an integer but we're keeping track of the strings so now that we've done that whenever we draw our map and that's in this draw scene right here we can check and figure out what source it's going to be and that we can just do right here i think i oh, know we need to know before we call it a grass source or grass sprite so we can just check we just do what I have is an extra texture and I call this texture just text and then RL texture 2D and then down here that'll be text that'll be text and that'll be text right here so we just do if source map I equals green 
then text equals grass sprite. Let me try running that again. 58. Uh, oh. Let's get rid of that and let's put that like there. And then 155. Okay, I think I forgot the if statement again. Else if right here. So as we can see, it's the same thing. We tell it to be the grass sprite. So now it's going to work as grass. And let's just set up the rest of the sprites. We can look again at our resources. In the resources, there's all these files. So we'll just create a letter for each one of these files. Um, there's six of them, I believe. So for these six, we can do L f h w t so some this one like itself doesn't actually go to anything l is for hill so like, i mean it doesn't start with l but we're using that for house so house sprite and then you could have more spelled out but i think it'll just make it a little bit weird in here if some of them are two letters it'll throw it off a bit so that's a fence sprite and this is the house sprite this is the water sprite and this is the tilled sprite and that should be all of them and now it's actually create all of these and now that we've created them we're going to actually load them in after this as well so that's hill this is fence this is house and this is water, this one is tilled. And down here we can load them in. And loading them in once again, so this one is going to be hill. That one could be fence, that one could be house, water. Tilled. Is that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and that one is an extra one. And uh, if there's, I don't know if I changed the name of any of these. I don't think I did. I think it was just with the character. But um, I'll just leave in the spaces. I guess that doesn't matter too much. But we're gonna want to name them just based on these. So there's hills, just like that, and then there's fences house right is wooden space house so just like that and then the water one is water and the next one is tilled dirt so let's go and change some of these let's change that to L that one to L and that one can be water and let's try running that to make sure that it all works. Okay, you see it's using the water one and the hill ones. I guess those are hill. So hill, that's one and one. Actually, let's look at the hill one to make sure that it's working. Hills. And one is this one, and I believe that was the one that it drew. So that's one, if we do two, it'll be that next one. So let's change that one to two. Oh, my bad. And yeah, there it is, it draws the other one. Um, another thing to note is, as I said, this one's empty. With some of them, you wanna have grass below them, even if they are empty, such as the ones for the houses. So the houses and the fence, we're going to check for those. And if they exist, or if those are the ones that are being drawn, we're also going to draw grass below it. So you just do if source map i equals house, or if the source map i equals fence. And if that's the case, we're going to draw just, an, um, we're going to draw 
the grass sprite below it. Now we're just gonna draw the first grass sprite that there is. Let's copy this and here grass sprite. And we can actually check for that. Let's change this to house and that to house. And um, I don't remember which one it is, so let's just try a few of these. Okay, so you can see this one right there, there's a window, and through the window you can see that it drew grass below it. Um, I guess these other ones for the house were just empty, possibly. House, house. I guess just these three. Um, let's double check that, actually. Okay, yeah, looking at it, these other ones were empty, the ones right beside it. But if we were to do four, we can see as well that there is a door. So let's just make that one a house as well. And here's the door, and that's being drawn in there. I had a problem earlier that some of these tile sets, as you walked around, um, they didn't stay even perfectly. And if that's the case, that has to do with, I think, this conversion of which one's an ant, which one's a float, and whatnot. That might cut out some of it. But another thing that I saw that fixed it was just changing the zoom, which I thought actually looked nicer. Um, you can change the zoom just in this parameter right here, but let's just test it out like this. And we're going to set our zoom to, uh, maybe let's try setting it to 2. Point. Well, let's try 3, actually. So we're setting it to 3, and then I have another map. Um, it's in here. I'll share it with you guys. But it's that right there. And this should be everything that we need. Let's try running it now. Alrighty. Uh, I forgot I wanted to change the player size also. So the player destination. Let's change that to 60 and 60. And here we have it. We have him walking around. I also want to change the speed. So player speed. Okay. And that's right up here. And the player speed, let's change that to 1.4. Alrighty. And there's everything. Our mini house, this mini island. As you can see, we can get some of the curves. And we have our idle animation that we did as well. Let's go ahead and open up that map in case you guys wanted to look at it. And it's kind of big. So it's 26 by 16. That's the size of the map. And here's the map. As you can see, I added the zeros in front to make them even with the larger numbers. And down here is the map for what type of file it comes from. And you can see there's this is the spot that has the water. So I, reverse, I flip the water tile every single time between one and two. And here's kind of the divots around the water. But uh, yeah, it's a little complex, but this is just the first thing that we're doing for that. This isn't the way I would do it always, especially just because this is a lot to do. But it's the simplest way I figured I found to do it using the tile set that we have without changing anything, without using additional software, because I didn't want to make it too complex. And I, th I don't know, I don't know how long this video has been recording, but I think this was uh, short enough to explain everything. But thanks again for watching. If you guys are following along, feel free to leave a comment. I would like to know how many people are actually doing the coding themselves, because there's about a thousand views for each one of these videos that I publish, but I don't know if there's a thousand people doing it, or if maybe it's just five people doing it. So if you guys left a comment, that would be great. And thanks again for watching and see you guys again next time. Bye.